Good morning, Brandon. Hi, Andrea. How are you today? I'm doing okay today. Doing okay. Good. So we've got some questions trickling in. You got a good one we for us today? Do. I do. Um, we have somebody who's reached out via social media asking us, how do I curb my anxiety over potential weight gain during this time? Mm, Any anxiety thoughts there? Anxiety over weight gain. Yes. I think we both have some thoughts there, right? <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, when I read this question, I thought of both the anxiety and the weight gain, like two issues there. So, you know, knowing and recognizing that there's a tendency towards anxiety. And we've been talking about the circle of influence as a way to sit in our powers, our influence, because when we have little control and a lot of concern, we have anxiety. That's where it comes from. So um, how do we come back to our circle of influence? And there's a lot of things I think you and I were just chatting about that mm -hmm. bring us to that arena. But I, I'm going to turn it over to you for some thoughts in a second, Brandon. But I just want to say, like, we've been in this for over a month. Some, you know, mm -hmm. for some of us, it's nearly two months. And this is a new reality. It's not, as we were saying, a snow day. So how do we behave in a new reality? It's not a never ending reality, but it is a new reality. So what comes to mind for you about how we adapt and adjust? Yeah, well, I think you said um, you kind of set the stage really, really well with the coronavirus and the circle of influence materials that you've put together for us um, and the calm one stood out when I read this question and thinking about you know calming the nervous system but also something that you've said repeatedly to our community is it's so important to maintain a routine so um, the routine is going to look different from inside of our homes um, and our outside exposures uh, to the world um, the rest of the world, but you know, what are the, the immediate things that we can do? So would it be okay if I ran through Please. a few of those things? Yeah. Yeah. So speaking specifically to lifestyle patterns and routine, um, you know, what are some of the things that you can do around your day-to-day -day habits um, that can help slow you down and not mow through kind of your, what you have set aside <laughs> or, you know, randomly running to the kitchen for food. So, you know, being really thoughtful when you sit down and eat and chewing your food really thoroughly and giving your digestive system the indications that you are being nourished. Um, uh, I love this one, sip on some hot soup or tea, um, adding in some coconut oil or raw honey, great ideas. Um, walk, get up and do something different. Um, I was commenting to you that I think this might be a bit better up here in, in my neck of the woods if the snow would stop. Yeah. I can see my garden starting to pop, but notice your surroundings and pay attention and be present. Um, take time to invoke your smell response with flowers and, and essential oils. Um, uh, and you would recommend is frankincense. And then take breaks from the news in our phones. It's important to connect and be aware of what's going on, but not. Um, you know, be so involved that we're kind of missing out on on uh, being present in our days and in our bodies. And that's especially true for bedtime. Yes, such good tips, Brandon. I love it. I love it. And I think, you know, the idea that there are these other things we can insert and recognize around routine. And one of the things that this question made me think of as well is what are the things that you do when we're not sheltering in place that quell that anxiety because implicit in the question is that the anxiety over weight gain is particular to this time and that it's not happening in those other times. So what is it that helps you to feel like that is more in your influence outside of shelter in place? And how do we put some of that routine back in place. And I think this goes back to the snow day thinking, sometimes when it's a vacation or it's a snow day, we're like, whatever, I'm baking, I'm doing this, I'm gonna just like lay in bed, I'm not getting out of my pajamas. Mm -hmm. And that's not what's gonna support us right now. I was just saying to my 19 year old, cause 
he's used to being in college and being physical, not just walking on campus, but he works out at the, the athletic facility. He takes saunas. He's on the tennis club and the ping pong team. And he's used to being physical. And he's basically like college in his room, playing keyboard in his room, mm -hmm. studying in his room. Like he's not doing anything. And he showers and bathes every day, but he's then putting back pajamas on. Mm -hmm. And I get dressed every day. Yeah. And just these little things, these routines that we do, setting that up for yourself is going to put you back into that circle of influence. And then so many of the things you said, Brandon, we might even need to time those. Like mm -hmm. I'm having my breakfast, <clears throat> the refrigerator's right there, and I'm going to go at it again if I just know that it's open. But how about 10 o'clock? I'm having my tea with some coconut oil and a little raw honey. Like it might be that we need to, if, if that feels good to us and we know it's not triggering to put that much control around our food, that might be a way to just reintroduce some routine where you would have had it before. Any thoughts about that, Brandon? I love the routine. I love being able to figure out within that routine where um, food and other um, contributing factors to weight might come into play and it got me thinking about sleep and how important sleep is so when we don't sleep well we might be making up for that energy deficit by overeating so for staying up watching Netflix or you know I know there's some people that are really suffering with getting a good night's sleep because of the anxiety at all yeah. so prioritizing sleep and thinking about getting to bed at a regular time waking up at a regular time um, that's going to take some pressure off of us wanting to fill ourselves up in other ways. Yeah, such a good point as well. Um, I think that we might even realize that we're wanting to sleep more during this time and feel guilty for that, but there's a collective energy, a collective slowing down right now. So if you can go for it, go for that extra sleep, set up a little routine. I do want to say the caveat that we do hear from people about who have history of eating disorder that, you know, sometimes these routines or this strict structure isn't the right thing. So take this as it is appropriate for you. We recognize that everybody is different. And if you're struggling with anything, we do have our bi-weekly uh, free counseling sessions mm -hmm. and we'd love for you to join us and get some individualized support, ask your particular question. And uh, I think it's just important to constantly, when we're struggling with something, when you're asking yourself a question, go back to the circle of influence and that concept, that kind of framework and say, what am I concerned about? Where do I feel like I don't have control? And what can I do differently? And Brandon, you gave so many amazing tips of what we can do differently. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is great conversation.